right, that does it for sports and uh, the news part. We're going to go straight into the interview many of you have been waiting for. He's live on Skype right now in Berlin, Germany. Mig, Mig, oh, FaceTime. That's FaceTime? My bad, my bad. Okay, FaceTime. <laughs> He's laughing too. Miguna, welcome to Jeff Kananga Live. It's good to see you smiling despite the ordeal that you've been through the last 24, 48 hours. Thank you, Jeff. So tell me, what's the latest? Uh, yesterday, you were in Paris, actually, you were in Berlin in the morning, Paris in the evening, and then you were in the plane and you were kicked out of the plane. Take it from there, please. Uh, so, Jeff, you know what happened. What happened yesterday was that uh, I went to the TXL uh, International Airport in Berlin to check in uh, for my flight to Kenya through Frankfurt. And when I arrived at the check-in counter, the manager uh, checked my name and it was already flagged. She took my passport and cross-checked it and said, yes, uh, my name is listed on a red alert issued by the office of the president in Kenya. So we went on the side and she showed me uh, the red alert, that's the the picture in the image in German that I sent to you yesterday. And I asked her what was it about, and she said that uh, uh, the order was that Lufthansa had to cancel my flight uh, because if they didn't, their plane would not be allowed to land in Kenya. Uh, so they had to comply with the directives. Uh, they didn't understand what the reason was, uh, well, now I can't even see you. It's, it's okay. We can hear you, Miguna. We can hear you. Carry on. Yeah. So um, they didn't understand what it is because it was not explained. I showed uh, the, the court order that had directed the Kenyan authorities to comply. And they said that I had to discuss with the so-called Kenyan authorities so that they had to, in writing, remove or cancel the red alert. Otherwise, they would not be able to carry it to Kenya. Uh, so after back and forth, and of course, after letting you know what was happening, um, the flight left me there. And I went to the lounge, and I waited. Uh, they managed to... Um, to book for me uh, my other flight, which was Air France flight. Um, and I traveled to Paris from Berlin yesterday. And the flight that was supposed to take me to Nairobi was to leave around 7 uh, p.m. Uh, French, you know, French time. Uh, there was nothing untoward at the airport, there were a lot of Kenyans, and I believe that uh, as of that time, there was no red alert. I waited, and then just before we entered the plane, I tweeted that we were coming, essentially that I was traveling to Nairobi. Uh, there seemed to be no problem. I checked in, I went to my seat, like everybody else, we sat down, uh, the doors were just about locked, the gate was already locked, and the plane was preparing to taxi so that it would take off. And then the duty manager came in and approached me and said that um, I, I, I could not fly, that they had received the same red alert that Lufthansa had received. At this time, they didn't know about Lufthansa's uh, red alert. Uh, but they said they just received it, which implies that the red alert was issued after one or two things happened. Number one, uh, that the so-called Kenyan authorities saw my tweet, and or, as, as um, Air France told me, that now Nairobi, meaning the regime in Nairobi, has directed all airlines flying into Nairobi and using Kenyan airspace to provide them with the manifest of all passengers before the planes take off. 
Uh, and I believe the reason why they did that, because this is a new directive, is so that they see me on the manifest so that they can issue the so-called red alert. And once that, that is done, the same demands that were made to Lufthansa were made of Air France, and they said they had no alternative but to, uh, to decline to uh, transport me to Nairobi. So, of course, I came out of the plane. Uh, eventually, they put the luggage, they delayed the flight, and after about three hours, I got my luggage, and I had to look for uh, alternative accommodation uh, before I made my way back to Berlin. Okay. So, this is about the regime in Kenya refusing to obey court orders. There is nothing I have done to warrant what they are doing. And if I have done anything for which they would like to charge me or prosecute me, coming to Kenya is what... Megun, I don't know if you can still hear me. Can you still hear me? I'm, I'm hearing you, okay. but can I finish this? Yes, go ahead, go ahead, yeah. Uh, obviously, I went to Berlin, and obviously I also took a flight to Perry. There was no designation of me as anything other than a normal passenger. Uh, I was treated respectfully in all my flights when I to Germany and went across to other uh, cities of the world. And these airlines told me that they had no problem of taking me to Nairobi, but that the so-called Nairobi authorities had to say that they could take me to Nairobi. So my, my, my issue with this is, is, is as follows. Number one, this is akin to somebody breaking into your house, kidnapping you, taking you from your house, taking your keys and your title deed, locking you out of the gate, and then telling you to produce documents they have taken from you, and telling you you are not the owner of the house because they have taken your documents because they have guns. The matter has gone to court, and in any country governed by the rule of law, if there is a dispute either between citizens or between citizens and the government, the only arbiter is a court of law. Courts of law have ruled that they violated my rights, that they should not have taken me out of Kenya, that they should not have broken into my house, that they should not have detained me in communicado, they should not have tortured me, they should not have taken my passport and destroyed it, and they should not refuse to allow me back to, to Kenya. Maguna, can I jump in? Uh, as of yesterday, Justice Korir said that they should allow me into Kenya using my Kenya national ID mm. card and all the passport they took from me, which the court gave to my lawyers mm. and my lawyers have possession of Maguna, let me jump in here if i will do that okay let me yes? jump in let me jump in real quick and say look and i'm sure you've seen the press release by government spokesman cyrus oguna saying listen he doesn't understand why miguna hasn't walked into any embassy on the planet and apply for his passport the embassy staff are literally waiting for you to give you your according to his press release Okay, so, so Jeff, listen to this. Number one, Oguna is not a party in court. This case is in court, and the courts have already ruled on it. Oguna cannot change the ruling of the court. A government cannot change the ruling of the court. If you have a problem with a court order, you appeal to the court of appeal, which they did and lost. And then the second appeal, they withdrew themselves. So that's number one. The court orders are crystal clear. The court orders are against them, not against me. The court orders are in my favor. And the court orders say, number one, return his passport in its valid form. Number two, allow him to enter Kenya unconditionally. 
Number three, his national ID card is enough for purposes of identity. Number four, his passport that you destroyed is deemed valid and he can use it to leave or enter Kenya anytime he wants. And number five, pay the damages that we, you are ordered uh, to pay. They have not done any of that. Now they are putting other conditions to the court. They are now saying that they who have been found culpable are the ones to dictate to the courts and to me how they are going to obey the court order. They are changing the court order. The court order did not say I should go anywhere to apply for the passport. The court order said return his passport. They are supposed to comply, period. Okay, okay. I, I hear your point there, Miguna. A simple question that a lot of people are probably asking right now, by the way, is what do they fear from this man so much? What do they fear from you, Miguna, or about you? I, I think you know it, uh, Jeff. Number one, they can't buy me. They are used to buying almost everyone that has been criticizing them. They bribe you with money, like they did to Ray Lodinga. Ray Lodinga is muzzled. Ray Lodinga is now singing Osana to Uhuru Kenyatta, who stole his elections and who killed his supporters, and whom he said he was going to remove from power because he said Uhuru was illegitimate. And I believed him. But Ray Lodinga now is praising Uhuru Kenyatta. Ray Lodinga has been bought, and I cannot be bought. So that's number one. I cannot be bribed, and I cannot be bought. Number two, I cannot be intimidated and threatened into silence. I have refused to compromise my principles, my ideology, and my values, my value of integrity. Number three, I am right. I speak the truth, and I am fearless. And the youth of Kenya, they have realized, are actually supporting me. So what they are doing, Imagine, Jeff, I'm one man, I'm unarmed, they don't have an army, I don't occupy public office, but they fear what I speak about and my ability to articulate what I am saying vis-a-vis -vis their lies. For example, they are peddling lies that their BBI is supposed to unite Kenyans and to bring inclusivity, and to bring peace. Am I not a Kenyan? And the courts have said I am a Kenyan. So how are they uniting with me when they refuse to allow me to come back to my motherland? How are they including me as part of Kenya by refusing to, to, to obey court orders? How are they bringing peace when they don't respect my basic human rights? So you can see everything is a lie. Okay. And they don't like the fact that I will be telling them that I'm lying because BBI's intention is to eliminate the time limit so that Uhuru can cling to power for life. That is what it is supposed to be. Okay. That is what it By the way, Miguna, uh, I, I don't believe that a red alert has ever been issued on a Kenyan, as far as I, I know. I don't know if you know... Yeah, Jeff, red alerts are not issued by uh, countries against their own citizens. Uh, red alerts can only be issued on people who have already been convicted and are running away from justice. So say, for example, I came to Kenya, committed a, a crime. I have been tried, convicted. Then before sentence, I take off. Uh, the Interpol will issue a red alert. A office of the president or interior does not issue red alerts. A police service that is supposed to be apprehending a runaway, somebody who is a fugitive, is the one that issues a red alert to all other police uh, officers around the world to apprehend the fugitive. I'm not a fugitive. I'm trying to come back. So... Yeah. If I had done something wrong, why don't they just arrest me and take me to court? Okay, let me they ask. Mm. Let me ask you. Say, mm. 
They said they believe in the rule of law. And the rule of law says the principle of the rule of law, the basis of any democracy, is that everyone is subject to the law. And nobody is above the law. And the constitution is the supreme law of the land. They are subverting and betraying and disobeying all of that. Okay, Mikuna, let me ask you this. As much as you are gaining a lot of sympathy around the country and around the world, there are a lot of people who say, look, this is a lone voice out there. There are no riots or demonstrations in Miguna's favor. No one is protesting out there, demanding your return, or very few are. I mean, who do you speak for, Miguna? So, so Jeff, I speak for myself. Each one of us can only speak for ourselves. You, Jeff, you speak for yourself. Raila Odinga can only speak for himself. Uhuru Kenyatta can only speak for himself because we are all individuals. They are not superior to me. They are just human beings like you and me. The mere fact that you have power does not give you a uh, right to violate the, the, the rights of other people. Power is supposed to be exercised for the benefit of everyone, including Meguna. All right? So when you say, who do I speak for? I speak for myself. But I also speak about issues that affect millions of Kenyans. And when you say there are no riots because of what is happening to me, are you implying that there should be riots so that you can blame me for the riots? So that you can say Miguna is violent? So that you can have a justification for saying you don't want Miguna back in Kenya? No, there should be no riots. Miguna has never been involved in, in riots. You see, this thing that they did uh, with Lufthansa and Air France and with, with all airlines now flying into Nairobi and all Kenyan ports was to provoke me to do something that they could use. They were saying, for instance, in the statement that you just referred to, that I was an unruly passenger. So ask yourself, when they say I was unruly, what took me to the airport? They broke into my home at night when I was sleeping, abducted me, and then one week later were forcing me into a plane out of the country. And I had not planned to travel. And I had not booked a flight. And I had no intentions of going where they wanted to take me. So what would you do, Jeff, if I came to your home, took you from your bed in the middle of the night, then went with you, and now I want to take you to Ethiopia? And there is no reason why I'm taking you to Ethiopia. Wouldn't you say if you have dignity and you, are, you, know, you have pride as a human being, you'd say, no, I'm not going to Ethiopia. And that's exactly what I do. Why should they be taking me where I don't want to go when the Constitution is clear that a Kenyan citizen can live in Kenya anywhere they want, can work in Kenya anywhere they, they want, can depart and travel out of Kenya anytime they want, and can return to Kenya anytime they want? Why should that not apply to me? I, I, I am not a second-class citizen. I'm not a third-class citizen, and my rights are not favored given because I agree or disagree with anyone. And I'm not going to beg my rights. Naguna, let me ask you this. It must be very expensive for you to uh, travel, commuting between Berlin and Paris, Paris, Dusseldorf, Dusseldorf back to Berlin. I mean, what's the next move, Naguna? What's next for you now? Uh, as a member of the media, what you should be saying is, Mikuna, what can we do to ensure that these tags comply with the court order? What can we do to help you bring these people to account in terms of respect for human rights, respect for the Constitution, respect for the rule of law? And I will tell you, up, condemn what they are doing. Join me in saying every Kenyan has the same rights, that we are all equal before the law. That's it.
You know, m maybe in retrospect, if you hadn't been so vitriolic in your tweets or in your posts, maybe this comeback would have been a lot smoother, Miguna? So, so let me ask you, Jeff. There was a time you were arrested and you squealed and, and cried like a baby because you allegedly defamed uh, Jimmy Wanjiki. Um, and, and you had to produce, I think, two million to be released. You didn't even stay in detention for two hours, but you cried for two months. So uh, did, you, did you say that you did something wrong and that you would not do it again because somebody arrested you? No, Jeff. If you are a man of dignity, if you are a man of integrity, if you speak the truth and somebody victimizes you because you speak the truth, don't change. Even if you are, as uh, Gandhi used to say, if you are just one person, a majority of one, don't change the truth, don't water down your integrity. What you call vitriolic, mm are truth. There is nothing I have said which is not the truth. Okay. And uh, you know, and you know, Jeff, let me finish this. Yep. You know the only reason Meguna cannot be sued in any court of law in the world for defamation out of all these things that you call all manner of things, some people call them insults, some people call them vitriolic statements, is because truth is an absolute defense in 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 defamation law, in libel law. They know it is the truth. They know I would embarrass them if they went to court with me, yeah. and they cannot sue me. So the only thing they can say is Miguna is abusing us. Abuse, even if I was doing it, is not a criminal offense. Okay, Miguna. And abuse yeah. is not something someone can use as a basis for saying I should not enjoy my constitutional and citizenship rights, just like they are. Okay, and just for the record, I did not squeal like a baby, Miguna. Just for the record. <laughs> uh, Jeff, remember what you did. <laughs> All right, listen, Miguna, uh, on the line right now joining us is government spokesman, retired Colonel Cyrus Oguna. Oguna, meet Miguna. Retired Colonel, can you hear me? So, so why, why am I talking to Oguna? I mean, Oguna is not a respondent in my case. But he's the one Oguna, who's been writing all these press releases on behalf of no, the government. No, Oguna, Oguna, I'm not going to respond to Oguna because Oguna has no power in this government. Okay, can he's I ask, let me ask him a question. You stand by me, Guna. Colonel, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you, Jeff. How okay, you? so you, you sent out a press release today saying yes. that uh, Miguna should now walk into any embassy on, on the planet and he can get his Kenyan passport. Is that what basically you said? Yes, yes, that is very true. Why, why should he do that and not come home and get a passport when he gets home? Yeah, and that is because, uh, Jeff, uh, there's something that uh, Miguna did mention about uh, red alert. And this red alert actually is it an, a notice that uh, is normally issued uh, against passengers who have demonstrated and rude behavior. And this is in line with uh, ICAO regulation uh, Annex 17 that states that uh, any passenger that uh, exhibits and rude behavior can be prohibited from traveling. Okay, let me ask you this and real quick, Colonel. Let me ask you this real quick. Who issued the red alert? Was it yourself? Was it the, the red government? Alert, the red alert was, was, was issued by the Kenya government. By the Kenyan government, was, was issued, that the CS? Yes, it, it was issued in uh, uh, June of 2018. But Miguna has traveled since then. He's been to America, he's been to other parts of Europe and the world, and it, there's never, there hasn't been a red alert. I saw him in D.C. in May, Miguna. We were together, weren't we? Yeah, but he's not traveled to Africa. He's not traveled to Kenya. So the red alert only applies to people traveling to Africa? The red alert that was issued was issued by the so Kenya government. So this law was made for Africa. The red alert was issued by the Kenya government. For Miguna traveling no, anywhere? No, the in... red alert uh -huh. was issued by the Kenya government and was issued on the basis of the behavior. And we are members of the international community. And because we are signatory to be regulated. Yes. I can hear you, Colonel. 
Uh, uh, Jeff, just yeah. let me respond. Jeff. Okay, you respond, Miguna. Go ahead. Uh, he, he mentioned uh, in his statement about the, we the status. Ca can I can I just respond? Go ahead, go ahead, Miguna. He stated that uh, the the grade of uh, JKIA was high, mm -hmm. and that my behavior reduced it. Mm -hmm. Now, Jeff, ask yourself the question: between Berlin T T uh, TXL and uh, uh, the Charles de Gaulle International Airport, or Pearson International Airport in Toronto, or the airport in Washington, D.C., or J.F. Kennedy Airport, which one is higher? The JKIA in Kenya, or these airports I've mentioned, the level of these airports are much more superior in every category than Jomo Kenyatta International Airport. And yet I fly in and out of these airports every day. Even right now, I just came from, uh, from Dusseldorf. Uh, and, and also, you know, in the morning, I flew out of uh, Charles de Gaulle International Airport. How come this red alert does not apply to these airports that I've traveled in and out of? So Oguna is lying, um, number one. Number two, who gives Oguna the legal basis of overturning high court judgments? The high court has ordered them to allow me and facilitate my travel into Kenya unconditionally. Okay, let the now colonel... Now he's talking about a lot that he issued. Okay, let the colonel answer now, Maguna. Thank you. Colonel, what yes, do you have yes, to say to that? Uh, uh, Jeff, the facility of the airport, of any airport, does not necessarily indicate how, you know, serious an airport is. Every airport has got a certain level of uh, security and safety measures. And Kenya and, and whichever airport that is out there are all categorized as level one or category one and, and and therefore facilities would not necessarily be used to determine how serious an airport is jka and all other airports in the world out there are all categorized as category one and that is based on having achieved certain measures of uh, safety and security that something that uh, is equivalent to any other airport out there. And that is a category that we are, as Kenyans, <laughs> must be ready to defend. Yes, can I answer that? Well, stand by, stand by, Miguna. Let me ask the Colonel one quick question, then you can answer. Colonel, real quick, um, was the red alert issued because Miguna was quote-unquote unruly or he didn't have a passport, or why was it issued? Red alert is issued on any... I didn't get that, Colonel. Go ahead. Yeah, Miguna was unruly, and that went against international regulations that are, you know, put forward there by ICAO, which is uh, International Civil Aviation Authority, Annex, well, uh, Civil Aviation Organization, Annex 17. Okay. And that prohibits any unruly passengers to travel. Okay, let me ask and you this. Okay, but if Miguna walks into the Kenyan embassy in Berlin, he'll get his Kenyan passport and will no longer be unruly or he can travel? Help me out here. That, 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 let, let me answer that. Go ahead, Colonel. Colonel, I think you're, you're breaking up. Yes, I, 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 I'll, I'll, I'll answer that. Go ahead. If Miguna today walks into any of the uh, embassies that, that we have abroad and he presents his biography. He will be issued with a passport. And then he can travel with that and he won't be unruly anymore? <laughs> Jeff. Yeah, Miguna, go ahead. Jeff, you can see how illogical and ridiculous he sounds. That, that all of a sudden, if I got a, a passport that he's talking about, which is really not what they are planning to do, then all of a sudden I'm not uh, unruly. But, but I wanted to say this, Jeff. Remember Kashoshi, who was killed in the embassy in uh, Ankara, yeah. in, in Turkey, by the agents uh, of the Saudi government? Yeah. Kashoshi did not know that he was being invited uh, into the embassy so that he could be killed. Uh, I am not that stupid and I am not that naive to walk into that kind of trap 
when there is no way anybody would be able to observe what is happening in the embassy when I'm surrounded by agents of the Kenyan government. So that I will not do because I will not die like a Shoshi. Number two, number two, how did Miguna get himself into the airport and be unruly? Who took him there? The same, same goons that Oguna speaks on behalf of abducted me from my own house and assaulted me at the airport. Jeff, you were there. You saw them assaulting me. You saw them breaking, uh, breaking, uh, stealing my money. You saw them tearing my coat. My, my suit was torn into pieces. You saw them pushing me. So was I the one attacking or they were attacking me? Who is it that behaved unruly at Jomo Kenyatta International Airport? And when they detained me at the toilet against the court orders, was that being rude? Were they complying with the, with the ridiculous policies that he cited? Oguna should have remained in the military because a military man is <clears throat> not an effective propagandist. Okay, Oguna Miguna. Is not a trained yeah. propagandist and will not be able to serve okay. this government. Stand by, Miguna. It's looking ridiculous. I'm sounding ridiculous. Okay, stand by. Colonel, are you still with us? I have a question I for you. I am with you, Jeff. Okay, I good. Let me ask you real quick. So, now that we are in this, for lack of a better word, quagmire, how do we get out of it? How do we undo this now? What, what's the next step for real this quick, man here? Jeff, there are two things. One... Go ahead, Colonel, go ahead. Uh, uh, real quick, what that advisory says is that for anybody who has been listed uh, through instructions issued to air, 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 the aircraft, is that uh, he must be able to travel having two uh, documents. One, he must have his passport, and the passport must have visa. <laughs> hold, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Yeah, he must, it, it must have a visa. And in this case, if Meguna was to travel, he ought to have acquired Kenyan visa wherever he was starting the journey. Can't he get a visa? Now that he does not have one. Can't he get a visa? Hold on. Can't he get a visa at, the, a visa at the airport? Says, the other one says, uh -huh. all right, that he cannot travel using his national identity card. <laughs> okay, Colonel, and, Colonel, real and, quick. And therefore, he is free. Yeah. And all, all our embassy staff, wherever, you know, abroad, if a country abroad, are ready and prepared to facilitate his acquisition of all those travel documents that he may require. Jeff, let me answer. H hold on, Miguna. Hold on, Miguna. One second. Colonel, why can't he get a visa on arrival like most uh, people who carry foreign Because passports? that will be going against the international regulations, and we are a party to those international uh, treaties. But, but this is someone who yeah. has held a Kenyan passport before, Colonel. I mean, what's the big deal? Honestly, bottom line... The big deal is this, that before, he was not unruly. Thereafter, he became unruly and was missed. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. so, hold on, Miguna, hold on, hold on. So, Colonel, the problem for you or the government with Miguna is the bottom line, he is unruly. He is unruly? And does, does getting a visa solve that, if he gets and, a and visa? Remember, remember Jeff, that uh, I did say earlier that we are category one. And it's something <laughs> that you work so hard to achieve. And if behavior of an individual threatens that, then we must be able to take measures that would ensure that we protect that. But number two is this, that Miguna Miguna is free, very free to go to any of our embassies. And he will be facilitated to get necessary travel documents. And this is what that instruction states. And it is hard to understand, even believe why Miguna Miguna is finding it so hard to walk to any of our embassies abroad and be able to be issued with a, a travel document. Okay, so Miguna, Miguna, Miguna before like you answer, okay. Miguna, so, before, so, before you answer, Colonel, real quick, just clarify this for us once again. For Miguna Miguna to come back home, what does he need to do, please? He needs to go to our embassies, any of the embassies abroad, and be able to acquire travel documents. Okay. 
so yes. Hold on, Miguna. Hold on one quick. And will he be able to get a passport in a day? Like, you know, w w is that possible or will that take time? It will be processed like any other, you know, uh, applicant. And indeed, just to give you, uh, Jeff... That but, but, Colonel, there's a court order that says Miguna should get his passport returned to him. Why should he apply for a new one? He must apply for a new one, first of all, because the other passport is already expired, one. But number two... Number two? Number two is, 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 is that uh, where he is, because he's already fired, then he must go and apply for new passport and he must present himself because his biometrics must be captured. That's all he needs to do when he can come back home? That's all he needs to do. Okay, stand by, Colonel. Miguna, you have the floor. Yeah, 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 Jeff, this Oguna man is not qualified to do the work that he's been given because he cannot even spin. Just yesterday, the same Oguna said that the president gave an order and that the president's order supersedes any other order. He was trying to imply that the president's order supersedes even the court order. And he said, because of that, Miguna can come to Kenya anytime he wants. But that's number one. He's changing that now. Number two, Uhuru Kenyatta himself went to Rubia's funeral and said that I was free to come to Kenya and speak as much as I want. Now he has not lived up to what he said. Number three, this man said I was unruly, and you asked a very critical question. Is a Kenyan passport going to stop him from being unruly? Oguna cannot answer that. Is a visa going to stop me from being unruly? Oguna cannot answer that. And number four, Anyone with a Kenyan passport does not need a visa. Why should I go to a Kenyan embassy, get myself a Kenyan passport, get a visa? A visa is only for visiting foreigners into Kenya. And because I would have a Kenyan passport like I do, I would not need a visa. Number five, uh, remember, Last year, the same Uhuru Kenyatta went to Mozambique and told Mozambicans that right now they can come to Kenya without a visa. Ugandans enter Kenya without a visa. Tanzanians enter Kenya without a visa. Rwandese enter Kenya without a visa. Southern Sudanese enter Kenya without a visa. But you are saying Miguna, who was born in Apondo, Magina village, and whose placenta was buried in that village, needs a visa to be able to go and attend the funeral of his father-in-law, in order to attend the funeral of his sister-in-law, in order to attend the funerals of all his family members that have passed since you forced him out of the country. Oguna is also saying that, in fact, they are not saying they will comply with court orders and issue me with a passport immediately like the court saying that i have to go quote unquote through the normal process let me tell you this jeff the biometrics are not taken at the embassies abroad and passports are not processed at embassies abroad applications are processed at embassies abroad but because embassy is under the ministry of foreign affairs whereas passports are issued by uh, immigration, which is under the Ministry of Interior, the applications have to be taken to the Ministry of Interior and processed in Nairobi because Ministry of Interior has no stations abroad. So in other words, all passports are processed in Nairobi. Okay. Oguna may not know this. Let me finish. Oguna may not know this. Passports can be printed within minutes. Someone like me who was a political exile got a United Nations passport printed in 30 minutes in Dar es Salaam in 1988. So Oguna is uh, ignorant of what happened out there. Okay, stand by, Miguna. Stand by. Colonel, you've heard me. I have, I have I heard what he's saying. Stand by, and my Miguna. response to him is, is this, that what he's saying yes. does not take into account that he is Go on, Colonel. Hello? Go on, Colonel. We yeah, can hear you. What he's saying does not take into account that he's not just a normal traveller. He's a traveller that has been 
categorized to be unruly. <laughs> and that is now just a complete different status. You understand? And, and because of that, he must be able to comply with the requirements of somebody of, like that who must therefore travel with, if he is going to travel with Canadian passport, then it must have a visa. Okay, stand by. Miguna, stand by. Colonel, let me but ask you this. But in addition to that, let me just clarify this. Yeah, go yes, ahead. That over 3,000 Kenyans have applied for passports abroad and they have been issued with passports abroad. Why is Miguna not willing to do that? Because, because Miguna, you took Miguna's passport illegally from his house in Nairobi. Okay, Miguna stand by. did not have his passport get lost. My passport was not lost. Okay, and stand my by. passport did not expire in 2018 when you took it. Okay, stand by. You Miguna. took the passport illegally from me stand and by. then went and destroyed it. Stand That's by, Miguna. Coward. Stand by. Yeah. Colonel, the, Colonel. The, the, the passport that Mibuna is talking about, Jeff, is, is a, a, an expired passport. Okay, you said that before, a, but let me ask you this. allow him to travel. Okay. It was right? not expired when you took it from it, it is expired now. However, Jeff, we are, as a government, we are ready to comply and willing to comply with court ruling. But wow. what is needed is facilitation, and we are ready to facilitate Mibuna Mibuna to be able to acquire travel documents. But he must present himself. Okay, let me ask you this, Colonel. Are you going to treat Miguna's case, or Miguna in particular, as a Kenyan citizen or a Canadian? Colonel? Hello? Colonel, do you hear me? Yeah. Miguna is a, Kenyan, yeah. is a Kenyan citizen and also a Canadian citizen. However, he's been listed as a rule as a ruled traveler. That's should never lose sight of. <laughs> Jeff. Miguna. Jeff, Jeff, it is it is quite sad if this is the man that actually speaks on behalf of the government. It tells you why Kenya is a failed state. It tells you the reason why 75% of the Kenyan youth are unemployed when people like that are employed and should not be employed in those positions. It tells you why human rights abuses are rampant in African countries. Because any decent government cannot argue with a court order. A court order, like the Honorable Justice Odunga stated when he was convicting Matiangi and his group, a court order is not a suggestion. It is not an invitation to a government. It is not a request, it is an order, and it must be obeyed by everyone if we are going to live by the rule of law. The rule of law covers everyone. No one is above the law. The president is not above the law. Oguna is not above the law. Miguna is not above the law. So when the court says Miguna is a Kenyan citizen, that never lost his citizenship, you must accept what the court has said. And when the court tells you, return this man's valid passport the way you took it from him, you don't go like a primitive man, then you punch holes in that passport, then you tell Miguna that he has to go and get a new passport when the court told you, issue it with a good, valid, Passport. Okay. Period. We get your point, Miguna. We get your point. Colonel, I'm yes. going to give you one last chance, okay? Give us the last yes. word on this because this is not going to go away or it could end up really ugly. Give us the last word. The last word is, is Jeff, that as a government, we are ready to comply with court uh, ruling. And the court said that we should be able to facilitate Miguna's return and we're willing to do that. But Miguna must be able to present himself to any of our embassies abroad and issued with a travel document. And presentation means that he will be able to give out his biometrics. That is the position. So, so, so oh. when did they buy my air ticket? Because facilitation, as I understood it from the court order, was that because they bought the air ticket that removed me illegally from Kenya, yeah. 
They must buy an air ticket and return me where they found me. All right, maybe not. I I'll, have now yeah. traveled many times and I've spent more than ten thousand okay. dollars on airfare alone, and they have not reimbursed me one dime. Okay, you know what, Miguna? I'm going to send you the colonel's number, and you can all talk on the side. Okay? Thanks, no, no, sir. no. I can't talk. No, no, no. Jeff, please don't, don't belittle this. This is not about Obuna. All right, we'll have to, we'll have he to leave it at that. For his left from his right. Miguna. This is about obeying court orders. Understood. We'll have to leave it at that if you don't mind. But we wish you all the very best there in Berlin and hope to see you back home soon. And if you do, come on the bench, okay? Thank you. Thank you very much. Colonel, thank, 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 thank you so much, Jeff. Thank you thank for you your so time much. as well. Appreciate your thank coming you, on and giving you. us the other side of the story. Thank you. Goodness thank gracious you. me. What do you say we take a break? Huh? What do you say? Yeah, I agree with you. Let's take a quick break. Come back. Mark Bichache, Herman Manora have been sitting there very patiently listening to all the conversation. I'm sure they have a lot to say, folks. Thank you so much, guys, for staying on. Paul Anisana, eh? apologies. But you know, news is news. Yeah. Now we're going to break it down. <laughs> Jeff Kinaga Live takes a break. We'll be back in a little bit.